In this video, I like to talk about how to factor trinomials. So each of these is a trinomial. Tri, of course, means three. So we have three terms um, in each of these expressions. Let me say, first of all, that if how to do it. If you're given an expression that looks like, say, ax squared plus bx plus c, each of these looks like that, right? Then you need to find two numbers which add up to something uh, S is going to stand for sum and multiply to something. P is going to stand for product. So S means sum and P means product. The value of the sum is whatever B is, okay? So uh, this value of S is B and the product is going to have to be A multiplied by C. And you need to come up with those two numbers yourself. yourself. So let's try it. Uh, this might seem a little bit abstract right here, but once we start doing ex these examples, it'll become more clear. So when I look at this, um, what is A and what is B and what is C? Sometimes when I ask that, students will say, well, A is 8x squared. A is not 8x squared. A is a number. A is actually the number in front of x squared, okay? So A is actually 8 here. We don't really have to write this down, but I'll just do it since it's our first example. A is 8, B is 14, and C is 3. So what is the sum? What is the sum that we have to find and the product? Well, S sum is the value of B, like I said over here, so S has to turn out to be 14. And the product is whatever A multiplied by C is. In this case, it's going to be 8 times 3, which is 24. So this is something we have to figure out on our own. We need to find two numbers whose sum is 14 and whose product is 24. Uh, there's quite a few ways to multiply to 24. I guess we could do 1 times 24. We could do 2 times 12, uh, 3 times 8, uh, 4 times 6, and I think that's all. Is there any of these that would lead to a sum of 14? I think this one would, right? 2 times 12 is 24. And 2 plus 12 is 14. So we kind of uh, think that 2 and 12, these are our magic numbers, okay? So let me just erase all this so it doesn't get too messy. We've discovered our two numbers. They are 2 and 12. Or 12 and 2, whichever, the order doesn't matter, okay? So what you should say to yourself is that, you know, this is the real goal. Once you know these two numbers, um, the rest is not too bad. So let's see what happens here. I'm going to recopy my original expression. And the, thing, the first thing I'm going to do is break up the middle term, 14x, with my two numbers. 14x is the same as 2x plus 12x, right? So let me break that up like that. And now, I'll also say that I wrote 2x plus 12x, but if you would have wrote 12x plus 2x, that would have been fine as well. The order does not matter here. Now what we want to do is look at these in pairs, okay? Look here and look here separately. I see some students, they write brackets at this stage. Um, I would not do that. Just think to yourself that those are two separate pairs. The first two is together and then the second two is together. I'll explain maybe a little bit later on why brackets are bad. So let's look at this first pair, 8x squared plus 2x, and we want to factor out whatever is common. Between 8 and 2, 2 is common. And then x squared and x to the 1, we take the lowest power of x out, so x to the 1, which is just x. And what do I have left over in there? Well, 2x multiplied by what is 8x squared? It's 4x. 2x multiplied by what is 2x? Well, that's just 1, right? Good, that part's done. Now, what about this pair? Between 12 and 3, 3 is common. Now, I sometimes see this. Students just write a 3 there. That's no good, right? You have to write plus 3 because it's a positive 3 you're taking out. If it was a minus 3 we were taking out, we'd write a minus 3. Uh, when I take out a 3 there, uh, what do I have left in here? I have 4x plus 1. Now, notice these, this and this are the same. If those are the same, that means everything is going good, okay? So, let's see. Uh, let me erase that. The last step here, 
let me just move that up a tiny bit. The last step would now be to factor the 4x plus 1 to the front. Now this is where some students get a little bit confused. Uh, one way to do it if you if you just want to kind of get the right answer and not really understand what's going on is all you do is you see 4x plus 1 is the same on both. You write that out front and then you write a bracket and what do we have left over here? 2x plus 3. And that's your factored form. That's the answer, okay? Now, it would be nice if you understood why it's true that you're going from here to here. What's the real reason that you're allowed to proceed from this step to this step? Um, some people just say, well, I just followed the procedure and 4x plus 1 is in both places here. I write that down. And then whatever's left over here and here, I just write that down as my next factor. And that does give you the right answer, but it's maybe not that great if you don't understand why that's true. Let me just... Uh, Look at this for a second, and this is done by the way. Okay, this is the done. This is done. I just want to explain why that's true, though. Instead of four x plus one in brackets, which looks looks kind of intimidating, let me just write capital A, just to make up a new letter. And over here it'd be three A, right? I have a feeling that if I gave you this expression and I asked you to factor what's common to the front, you might not uh, have any problem with that, right? You see that capital A is in both, so we write A. Uh, pull it to the front, and what do we have, have left over? 2x plus 3, right? And there's, if you want to put brackets here, you sure could. And now do you see the similarity between this and this? Uh, capital A is just a really, just an abbreviated form for 4x plus 1. And if you understand why you can pull out A to the front here, just because 4x plus 1 is more big and complicated over here, for the same reason, you can just pull out 4x plus 1 to the front here as well. So that means, uh, you know, that the re there is a justification for going from this step to this step. It's not just magic. It's actually just common factoring, except with a larger expression, 4x plus 1, instead of just a single letter, A. I hope that makes sense. All right, so let me just erase this. Um, that one's done, okay? So let us try the next one, which is uh, right here, 5x squared minus 13x minus 6. Why don't I just erase uh, this stuff here? And we'll do it right beside. So what is the sum and the product have to be on this particular question? Well, the sum is the number right here. Is it 13? No, it's not. It's negative 13, right? Make sure you include those negative signs. And what's the product? It's the number in front here, 5, multiplied by the number here at the end, negative 6. 5 times negative 6 is negative 30. So we need to find two numbers which multiply to negative 30, which have a product of negative 30, and add up, have a sum of negative 13. Now, don't think about numbers that add to negative 13. That's not going to get you anywhere. You want to think about numbers that multiply to 30. There's not too many of those, right? How do we multiply to 30? I guess we could do 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10. 4 doesn't work. Uh, 5 does, 5 times 6, and I think that's it. Now, which one of these can give us 13? Well, let me say, first of all, that if you're multiplying to negative 30, that means one has to be negative and one has to be positive, right? So imagine one of these is negative and one is positive. How could we get negative 13? Uh, I think we could get it from this one, right? You might think 3 and 10, you know, 3 plus 10 is 13. But to make that negative 13, both would have to be negative, right? We would need a negative 3 and a negative 10. But then we'd have a problem because negative 3 multiplied by negative 10 gives me positive 30, not negative 30. So this one is is no good. It's actually this one right here we want, 2 and 15. Because we're going to make our 15 be negative, and then our 2 be positive. Let's check it. Is it true that negative 13 added with 2 gives negative 13? Yes, it is. Is it true that if I take negative 15 and I multiply it by 2, I get negative 30? And that's true. So we found our magic numbers, OK? And now we can uh, proceed. So let's see what happens here. Um, 5x squared minus 13x minus 6. Let's first break up 
I'm going to leave. So what I do is I leave this first one alone. Okay, 5x squared doesn't change. The minus 6 doesn't change. But the minus 13x does break up. It breaks up according to these two magic numbers. Minus 13x is going to be rewritten as minus 15x plus 2x minus 6. So do you see how this minus 13, it kind of uh, split up into these two new pieces? And these two new pieces were created using our nice numbers that we found on this very first step. All right, so now what we do is we look at these in pairs. 5x squared minus 15x first, and then afterwards we'll look at 2x minus 6. And for each pair there, we want to factor to the front what's common. For the first one, 5x squared minus 15x, what's common there? Well, 5 is common, and x squared and x is, x is the lowest power I can pull that out front. What am I left with? Uh, 5x times what gives me 5x squared? That's x. 5x times what gives me negative 15x? That's minus 3, right? So that part's done. Over here, 2x minus 6. I think all that's common there is the 2, right? So I pull 2 out, and I get x minus 3 in brackets. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Notice I have x minus 3 in both. That's a sign that everything's going good. This is, uh, think of this as like, say, capital A if you want. We can pull that A to the front now. So x minus 3 gets pulled to the front. And what do I have left over? 5x plus 2. And there's our factored form. Now, you may say, well, what if I had written it the other way? The way I did it here was minus 15x plus 2x. What if we did 2x minus 15x? And I say that we could uh, do that just fine as well. Let's do it. Let's say that maybe uh, you had thought of it as uh, 2 and negative 15 as your numbers instead of negative 15 and 2. And it's really the same thing. Let's see how that goes. I forgot my x there. So 5x squared stays. Minus 13x is going to be broken up as positive 2x and minus 15x according to the numbers written in this order, minus 6. Now, what can we factor out here? 5x squared plus 2x. Well, uh, just an x, actually, right? Because there's nothing common between 5 and 2. So we get 5x plus 2. What about over here? Now, be careful here. Um, between 15 and 6, uh, we can take out a 3. But since they're both minus, we actually want to take out a minus 3. So when I do that, then I get a 5x plus 2, right? Let's check it. This is not 3. This is minus 3. What's minus 3 times 5x? Minus 15x. What's minus 3 times positive 2? Minus 6. So that's always one way to check it, to see if your factoring is right. You know, you multiply it back out in your head and make sure you get what you had on the previous step. Now notice you have 5x plus 2 in both of these brackets. You can pull that out front now. So you get 5x plus 2, and what's left, left over? x minus 3. And, uh, of course, the order is different here, but it's still the same factorization, right? The order of the factors doesn't matter. So that's the reason you can... Um, that's the reason that the order doesn't matter, and uh, you'll get the same answer no matter which way you do it, so don't stress about that. Now, I just want to say one important thing here. Um, let's say I go look at this step right here, okay? Uh, I'm going to erase what I have below it, um, or at least I'll just move it away a little bit. Um, I want to I want to point out a very common mistake that I see a lot, and it's it's bad. Remember how I said we want to think about these in pairs, and that's true. But don't do this thing. Don't don't write a bracket here and a bracket there, right? That's no good, because by putting in those brackets, you've actually just changed the question, right? Do you believe me? If we were to get rid of these brackets now, look what would happen. 5x squared plus 2x, that would stay. But then what would happen when I get rid of the brackets here? I have minus 15x, and then minus minus gives me a plus 6. But it shouldn't be a plus 6. It's supposed to be a minus 6. So by putting those brackets there, you actually cause problems for yourself. Let's say I tried to... Uh, I'm just going to erase this. It's bugging me. Uh, let's say I tried to do the problem now. I'd factor out my x just like before. And here, common is 3, so I pull out a 3, and I'd get 5x minus 2, right? 
And then I'd say, oh, this is 5x minus 2. This is 5x plus 2. This is a problem. And the whole reason that problem is coming up is because you put in those brackets there, right? Don't do that. Another thing I'll just say that's uh, sometimes I see is, uh, you know, you'll break this up just like we had 5x plus 2x minus 15x minus 6. And maybe you'll write brackets like this or something. And that's just, that's no good either because now this is, this is kind of already factored now, right? This is a product of two things. And uh, that's, that's not what we want either. So when you come to this step, after you've broken those up, do not write any brackets in, okay? Just think to yourself that this is a separate piece and this is a separate piece. And you want to factor out what's common on both, but don't write those brackets because it's just, it doesn't, uh, it's not going to lead you anywhere good. All right, so I hope you understood that. Um, that's how you factor trinomials.